What's going on you guys? This is Shiraz here coming at you with some more financial and business content. So for today's video, I wanted to go over a really important topic, which is the psychological aspects of investing in real estate. I mean, the reality behind it is real estate is such a unique asset. It is unlike a lot of other investments that you'll ever make in your life. So before I get too deep into it, if you could please smash that like and subscribe button, it really does help the algorithm pick up content creators like me up. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So what I'd like to point out first is the fact that your typical Canadian family has nearly 70% of their total net worth in real estate. So from an asset class standpoint and diversification standpoint, it is the single largest investment that they typically will make in their life. But what's unique about that is one major variable, which is the fact of how much leverage you take when you invest in real estate. So unlike your stock portfolio that you may or may not have, Typically, you actually have to pre-fund and fully purchase your stock purchases whenever you make them. In some cases, you may be able to play with what we call a margin account, where you may borrow a small amount of money to purchase stock, but typically those will only allow you to go up to about 50%. And even then, that is an ultra high risk situation and is not something that we recommend for the faint of heart or for those who aren't very suitable for it. However, when it comes to real estate investing, it is actually commonplace to borrow on the low end 80% of value and on the high end up to 95% of the value of the property that you're buying. That is 95 to 80% leverage that you take when you're buying real estate. So to go hand in hand with that, you typically get a fairly outsized return when you purchase real estate from a total dollar standpoint. Now, to go alongside of that, real estate has actually been one of the most stable investments that we maybe have had and I'm talking specifically about the city of Toronto as really a subsegment of this population. Just because we've been in such a weird situation in Toronto, it's not like any other asset or frankly any other geographical region for a lot of factors. And I'll get into those a little bit later. But as a starting point, one of the things to, to think about is the fact not only are you taking leverage, but how real estate is valued, I think, plays a really big role in how we feel and perceive real estate from a psychological standpoint. So bear with me for a second. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. So imagine, you know, you're at work and you're driving home. And as you drive home, you pull into your driveway. And where you'd normally see a real estate agent sign, you know, for buying and selling on your front lawn, imagine you replace that sign with a ticker. And just like the stock market and in your portfolio, every single second, the value of your home changes, just like your stock portfolio would and just like the ticker tape would show. Imagine that was changing every single second with every buy and sell that happened in the city of Toronto. And there are transactions that happen constantly. I would be willing to bet that any person would have a very different relationship with real estate if, if it was being valued the same way as majority of other assets that are out there. Typically, your financial assets. There is a constant valuation that's happening on those things versus the real estate market. You may get a valuation that happens, what, once a month? once a year, once every several years, or maybe once only in your life because you don't even look at it until you sell it. So the reality is that the valuation of the property, I think, is what gives people a different sense of return. It's not that the actual numerical return has been higher or lower. In some cases, it may have been, depending on what your investment to compare it with. However, the unique part about it is that it's valued at such an infrequent pace or a very sporadic pace that you have a different relationship with it. So I always want to tell everybody, just be mindful of your real estate. Only reason being is that how you look at it and how you perceive and behave with it is typically because of how it's priced, not necessarily because of how it is performing as an asset. If you wake up one day and in a year you made $80,000 in your house, fantastic, and that sounds great in all intents and purposes, and it probably is, but if you were to pack it down into that you have a million dollar property, that's like an 8% rate of return. That's not horrible, but it's not amazing either. So another thing that I actually also want to get into, which is related to the pricing of real estate. And so because it's so similar, I kind of need to preface the situation a little bit here. So when you're buying real estate, one of the unique things that happens is, of course, the fact that its valuations are not done too frequently. However, as a byproduct and result of that, specifically in the city of Toronto, we have had almost a 30 year track record in real estate with what, maybe three major pullbacks in that 30 year time period. 
So not only has it been providing you phenomenal returns, typically high single digits, if not low double digit returns, for the better part of the past three decades, it's also been extremely stable in that we haven't seen any major pullbacks. So there's this pain versus pleasure uh, index that we refer to a lot in specifically that your average person has an emotional response of two times worse when you have a negative event than if you have a positive event that may happen to you. So from a psychological standpoint, losing money is more painful than making money and not uncommon the fact that real estate has been such a stable investment. That's part of the reason why people have had such a psychologically positive experience with investing in real estate. The reality has been is if you've bought real estate, at least in the greater Toronto area in the last 20 years, it has been a phenomenal place to be. Not only has it been consistent, it's also been giving you a great return. So I don't blame anybody from having an outsized um, relationship with real estate because it's been, frankly, a really good investment. So another thing that you really want to be mindful of when you're looking at real estate is also the process of buying, which frankly can be a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, and it's interesting because when you buy a security or let's say any other investment in a financial asset, you typically have to open up an investment account, pre-fund it with a certain amount of money, frankly, and then you then go out and purchase an asset, which is a fairly instantaneous uh, process. When you look at buying real estate, by comparison, it is still fairly archaic. You're in a scenario where you may see a property that you absolutely love. You walk in there, imagine it has everything you want. It's got the flooring and the color that you want. It has the kitchen that looks exactly the way that you want it. All the bells and whistles. All of a sudden, you know what? I got to have that. That's mine. I want it. I need it. It's part of me now. You want to buy that property. Now, unlike any other asset where you can go and instantaneously buy it and it's yours immediately, you're now in a process where you now have to bid for it effectively in an open auction. And the weird part about it is you're not bidding against every other person that may or may not feel exactly the same way as you are. It is not based off of who comes first. It is completely subjective and it's at the seller's discretion who they choose to sell it to. And so they are in a position where they sometimes create bidding wars and creating this real emotional roller coaster. So that fear of loss that we all experience when you go in, and let's say you're going to a store and you want to, there's that pair of shoes that you just got to have. When you don't have that, you, you start feeling it like, I need that. That's mine. I need to have that. And I won't feel complete until I have that. Another big piece to look at when you're thinking about real estate is the tangibility. So not only is it a real hard asset that you can look, feel, and touch, unlike, let's say, a share of Apple. I mean, the last time I saw a share certificate was probably 15 or 20 years ago. They're not really commonplace. They're all electronic now. So it's kind of like in the ether versus a house. You can look at it. You can see it. And the biggest part is you can sleep in it. And it actually has a dual function in that it is an actual asset that you need to consume to live your life in that you need a roof over your head. So if you're buying for your primary residence, again, you may have a different emotional connection to a property, not because of the fact it's a better investment than the other one, is that there is a, a very unique tangibility to property versus almost any other asset. So based on this, as you can tell, it's been a kind of interesting period of time that we've lived in for the real estate market. And the reality behind it is that it is a very different investment from a psychological standpoint. So going back to my example of the ticker on your house, I would be willing to bet that if you had a ticker in front of your home and it was ticking up and down every second, the way that your portfolio of investments in your 401k or your RSP would be, maybe you'd feel a little bit different too. And maybe your emotional triggers that you may feel, let's say, when you're investing in the stock market, maybe you'd feel a little bit more of that too, if that was the case on how they're valued. But honestly, this is just my sort of take on the psychological side. I'd love to hear from you guys as to what has been your experience with buying real estate. Has it been a good investment for you? What's that emotional side been? I'd love to hear back from you guys. As always, if you could please smash that like and subscribe button. It really does help the algorithm pick up content creators like me up. And if there are other topics you want me to cover in the future, please do drop me a note in the comment section below. Anyways, all the best, guys. Thank you.